In this video, we will write linear equations from a verbal description by identifying the slope and y-intercept, or the two quantities. So first, we're going to start off by um, talking about the different types of verbal descriptions we're going to look at. There are four ways that a verbal description will give you information about a linear equation. We're going to need to annotate the problems to recognize which of the forms it's really giving us. This first video is going to be about the slope-intercept form and standard form versions. And then the ne next video will be about point-slope form and the two points versions. So let's dive into the first type of problem, which is slope-intercept form. We know that the slope-intercept form of the equation is y equals mx plus b. So this type of verbal description is going to give us the information necessary to write the equation in that form. It's going to give us the slope, or the rate of change, and a starting point, which is b, which is our y-intercept. So as we read through this problem, you and your friends plan to attend the county fair this weekend. The admission to the fair is $5, and the cost per ride is 50 cents. If your parents gave you $20, write and solve a linear equation to find out how many rides you can go on. Okay, so let's think about this. The rate of change is the slope in our equation. So we need to look for and see if we can find a rate of change in the problem. Well, a rate of change is going to be the cost per ride, which is 50 cents. So the cost per ride is the rate of change, the m value. Going to the fair, as soon as you get to the fair, before you actually get in, you have to pay the admission fee. So that's like the starting cost of how much it costs to go to the fair. So we have the $5 that it costs us to get in. That's like our starting value, our starting point, our B. Now, the X and Y, we really do need to identify what the X and Y are going to stand for in this problem. So we're going to write let statements for that. We're going to let x be the number of tickets. So in this equation, uh, the x is going to represent how many tickets or how many rides uh, we can go on. And we're going to let y equal the total cost of the fare. So as we look at writing the equation, we know y represents the cost, m represents the slope, which here is going to be the 50 cents, x represents the number of rides or the number of tickets, and b is the starting point. So we write our equation, y equals 50 cents times the number of tickets plus the $5 it takes to get in. And that's going to equal the total cost, which is y. Well, if our parents gave us $20, that's how much we can spend total. So we can't spend more than that. So the total cost it would be would be $20 for us to go to the fair, because we couldn't spend over that $20. So to be able to solve for how many rides you can go on if your parents gave you $20, you need to replace the value for y. So 20 is cost, so we're going to put 20 in for y. And then we're going to solve this equation. So subtract 5 and divide by 50 cents, and we get an x value of 30. So what does that x value mean here? x value represents the number of rides you can go on. So if your parents gave you $20, you could go on 30 rides. Next, once again, we're going to be looking for the slope and the starting point. While your family is visiting Deep Creek Lake, you and your mother decide to go boating. The rangers charge $6.50 per hour. Notice that looks like our rate of change. In addition to a $25 deposit to rent a canoe. If you wish to rent the canoe from 12.30 to 3.30, write and solve a linear equation to find the total cost to rent the canoe. All right, so the two things we're talking about here are the amount of time and the total cost. So we're going to have our x and y represent the number of hours and the total rental cost. We notice in uh, the problem we have our rate, which is the $6.50, and the starting point, so like the deposit, 
the first thing you have to pay is $25. So we're given our M, which is 650. We're given our B, which is 25. So now we can write that equation. Y equals $6.50 times the number of hours plus the $25 deposit equals the total cost. Notice how this is in that form, y equals mx plus b. The last part of this says if you wish to rent the canoe from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m., which means you would rent for a total of three hours. So we could use that three hours as a value of x and then plug in and solve for the total cost to rent for three hours. When we do that, we get a total cost of $44.50. So if you rented the canoe for three hours, it would cost $44.50. The next two examples are on your own. Your parents have decided to buy a new Toyota 4Runner. The next example is on your own if you buy a car wash at the gas station for $5. Remember to identify the rate of change and the starting point but also determine what your x and y have to represent in the problem. The next pattern we're going to look for is standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. We're going to use this form when we're given two different quantities. Notice that the form of the equation doesn't show us the slope. It also doesn't show us the y-intercept. So we're not going to be given the rate of change in this problem. We're going to be given information about two separate types of things. So looking here in the problem, Sam ordered two tacos and three enchiladas for lunch at the restaurant. His bill came to $7.80. If enchiladas cost $2 each, write and solve a linear equation to find the cost of a taco. All right, so let's first identify what we would um, set x and y equal to. So let's let x equal the cost per taco and y equal the cost per enchilada. Those are the two quantities that we're really talking about in this problem. We're talking about tacos and enchiladas. So we know it's going to cost something for each taco, it's going to cost something for each enchilada, and his total bill came to $7.80. So we've got two tacos, which means two times the cost per taco, and three times the cost per enchilada. So our equation looks like 2x plus 3y equals $7.80. Now we want to know if we know the price of the enchilada, can we find the cost of the tacos? And so if enchiladas are $2 each, that means we're going to plug that value in for y and then we can solve for the cost of the taco. So we solve for the cost of the taco and we figure out that it's 90 cents. So when uh, enchiladas are $2 a piece, one taco is gonna cost 90 cents. The next one here, uh, tickets are at a school play cost $4 in advance and $5 at the door. Total ticket sales for an evening production were $440. If no tickets were sold in advance, write and solve a linear equation to find how many were sold at the door. So as we read through this problem, we figure out that the two things it's talking about are the number of advance tickets and the number of door tickets. It costs $4 in advance and $5 at the door. The total ticket sales were $440 which means we can write the equation 4x and 5y had to be a total of 440. $4 times however many advance tickets plus $5 times however many door tickets had a total sales of $440. But then it tells us no tickets were sold in advance, but we let x equal the number of advance tickets, which means x will have a value of zero. And then we can figure out how many were sold at the door because that's our y value. So 4 times 0 is 0. Solving for y gives us 88. So there were 88 tickets sold at the door. The next two problems are on your own. Talking about Karen's piggy bank. 
and then the Madison High School Marching Band.